Okay, so this next set of videos, I'm going to do blood vessels of the thorax, and then maybe another separate one for just head and head and upper limb, um, head, neck, and upper limb. Okay, uh, the thorax is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to do arteries separate from veins because I don't want it to overlap and be all like weird and difficult for you guys to understand what's what's going on basically so I'm gonna draw my diaphragm here and put my abdominal aorta like that and in this case I'm gonna draw a mini heart here and drawing this mini heart so you understand that coming off of the left ventricle remember coming off the left ventricle we're gonna have the aortic arch like this, and then the uh, thoracic aorta. Uh, the Sorry, my, my dog's whining a little bit. Um, so the thoracic aorta is towards the left of the vertebral column. So it's on the left side of the vertebral column. I remember because the heart is technically situated on the right, on the left side or closer to the left side of the body. So right, the heart is situated closer to the left side of the body, just like that. Not really, whatever. That is gonna force some weird asymmetrical changes in the thoracic cavity, basically, okay? So we're gonna have our ascending aorta. Coming off the ascending aorta, we have the very first blood vessels that come off, which are coronary. So we have right and we have left coronary artery. I'm just going to abbreviate those ones because you guys already know those ones. Go back and double check. And then over on the right side, because, because it's going to take a little bit longer or more length to get to the right side towards the arm and the neck, we have to have one branch that's going um, this way to the right side, one branch that's going to come up towards the left, and then another one that's going to come over to the left, just like that. Okay. So we're going to remember our A, our B, our C's. The A is for the aortic arch. Sorry if that's written really small. And then here I'm going to write my B is for my brachiocephalic. C is for my left common carotid. And S is for left subclavian. Okay. And then, of course, on the right side, you're going to see that, yes, we have a right common carotid and we have a, uh, a left, uh, I'm sorry, right subclavian. They just come off of the brachiocephalic trunk. So this is right common carotid, and then this is right subclavian. Okay. So once we have the aortic arch, we have the descending aorta, and then this becomes the thoracic aorta. The thoracic aorta is going to have blood vessels that go in the intercoastal space. These are called posterior intercoastals. Really posterior intercoastal arteries. Okay, what is this gonna look like? Essentially what it's gonna look like is the blood vessels gonna come and wrap around here in the, inter in the intercoastal space like that. So if you think about it here, if this is the left side and this is where the aorta is on the inside, it's not on the outside of the vertebral column, it's on the inside of the vertebral column, okay? You're going to see that coming off, going posterior in that intercoastal space is the posterior intercoastals. And essentially it also wraps over and goes on the other side 
as well. So it would supply to the right and the left intercoastal space, the thoracic aorta. Then the thoracic aorta is also going to have individual branches here that are going to be esophageal and bronchial. Okay, basically esophageal and bronchial supply, that's right, to the esophagus and the, and the bronchi or to the lungs. Okay. The subclavian is going to have a couple of branches that you need to know. One of those branches that come off of the subclavian is going to come forward. And I always draw it like this and people get super confused. But basically think about subclavian is going to come like this, right, over the clavicle. It's going to be right about there. Branching off of it, what we're going to see is that there's going to be a little tiny branch that comes anterior and runs parallel to the sternum. And it's going to have branches that come forward. Okay. This is the internal thoracic. It's going to be on the inside of the thorax. So this is subclavian. This is internal thoracic. Okay. Internal thoracic eventually branches, and when it branches, it becomes the anterior intercoastals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what that looks like down here. Basically, this is going to be where my thoracic aorta is going to be. And we're going to see that posterior intercoastals come off like that. Okay. This is going to be my internal thoracics that are running parallel to my sternum and anterior intercoastals run like that. So blood vessels are continuous. Okay, this is internal thoracic. And this is thoracic aorta. So you wanna understand the internal thoracic comes off of subclavian. The other thing that comes off subclavian that's about right here is vertebral. That's the other one that you want to know comes off of subclavian. There's a lot that come off subclavian. They, 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 they send blood here to like the upper shoulder and the neck area. This is a little more complicated. Okay. So let's go and look, let's look at the vein, the, the venous drainage, the drainage of the thorax. The drainage of the thorax is a uh, far more complicated. So again, we're going to draw our heart right here in the middle. Okay. And this time we're going to draw veins. So I'm going to see that I have superior vena cava. And it's going to come all the way up like this. Mm. Sorry. I'm going to make that a little lower. I need. I think I need a little bit more. So I'm going to see superior vena cava. And then I'll see there's a branch that goes over this way from superior vena cava all the way to the arm. And then I'll have a little branch like this before, again, I'm going to branch over to that side, just like right, right there. And what I should also see is I have inferior vena cava. In inferior vena cava, I'm just going to draw to right about here, and I'm just going to leave it like open as if I cut the heart out, which I can basically erase where the heart would be, okay? So here, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. As soon as you have a branch, this is brachiocephalic. This tiny little branch is also brachiocephalic. So let's check that out. Let's, let's 
You see how brachiocephalic in the arteries, there's only one on the right side. But then for veins, you have a right and left brachiocephalic. It's just that the left brachiocephalic is much longer. So again, here we have left subclavian and then we have right subclavian. The reason why the left brachiocephalic has to be longer is because <gasps> brachiocephalics come together at superior vena cava, which dump into the right atrium. So this is all the way on the right side. So everything from the left side has to get all the way pulled over, okay? So I left brachiocephalic is longer than right brachiocephalic. Again, position of the heart. Then we have to understand how the posterior intercostals are gonna are gonna work here. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go to this cross section and I'm gonna draw. There's gonna be a blood vessel about here and, and a blood vessel ab about there. And then we have our internal thoracic veins as well. So internal thoracic veins, remember, are going to drain from our anterior intercoastals. Our posterior intercoastals now don't come off superior vena cava or inferior vena cava. Instead, there's a new system of drainage, and this is called the azygous drainage system. So the last branch off of superior vena cava is going to be the azygous. And what it does is it's going to drain the bronchial and the esophageal. I don't want to draw like that. Sorry. I forgot about all this other stuff on the other side. On, so on the other side, what we're going to see is we're going to see there's one blood vessel that kind of comes up like this and one blood vessel that kind of comes down like that, which is the other part of the azygous system. And essentially, posterior intercostals on the right side drain into these hemiazygous. So we have accessory. Ugh. Azygous. I'm really sorry if that's not the accessory one, but I'm pretty sure that the top one was the accessory and the bottom one is just the hemi. Sometimes I mix, I mix them up, okay? Essentially what you wanna understand is that blood's gonna flow on the left side into the accessory and the hemi, the accessory hemi azygous and the hemi azygous. They basically blood is meant to, is meant to drain into the azygous, where the azygous then drains it into superior vena cava. The rest of what the azygous does is the right side posterior intercostals. as well as the esophageal. Ugh. I hope these videos are almost done. Sorry, I'm sitting in a really odd position all day. And bronchial veins. They, they all drain directly into the as I guess, something you wanna pay attention to, okay? And now when we look at this, here, this internal thoracic, right? The internal thoracic, which drains the anterior intercostals. Instead of that draining into subclavian, it actually drains into the brachiocephalics instead. So just something that's a little bit different. Right. The other difference is that what drains into subclavian will vary slightly. I'm sorry, I was gonna say something, but now I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase this. Okay. So where brachiocephalic ends is basically this very first large 
this is a large-ish vein. In humans, it's much larger than it is like in say cats. But basically, this is the external jugular. I'm sorry. I was thinking about a cat for a minute there. Internal jugular, internal jugular. Okay. And then again, the next one that branches off is external jugular. And then you'll have vertebral. So those are the three that actually drain into the subclavian. So you notice how internal thoracic drains into brachiocephalic and then subclavian drains into brachiocephalic. Both brachiocephalics drain into superior vena cava. Okay. There is no common jugular vein. I've, I've told a couple of you this, and I'm sure I will always continue to get that question. There is no common jugular vein. External and internal jugular are two separate veins. They don't drain into each other, which is why there's no common jugular vein, okay? All right, so that's the vein system of the thorax. Let's do the arm, be done. 